Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Antoine saw the parcel delivery service arriving and ran out. We think that today is the Lego. C'est pour toi, Antoine! The moment we've all been waiting for. Well, we hope it's the Lego from Antoine's grandparents. Yes! <laughs> when are you going to build it? Now. And now! <laughs> oh, I love France. Right, I'm up and dressed and ready to tackle a project. I want to finish the headboards for the Chambre des Oiseaux. Nearly there. This is the last row. Selma was really sweet because last night he did the side for me. I'm determined to get both of the headboards finished today. It's happening. Every tack is off. This is a happy, happy moment. Now, let's see if I can just pull it off those... the little corner ones, yes. Lovely. It's actually in quite a good state underneath. I'll replace the wadding with a more modern wadding, but that's looking good. Here I've got the one that I made last summer. I never finished edging it because I don't think I had the edging at that point. I'm not sure. And now I have to cut out a piece of this fabric. I have a little bit of the fabric like this that matches the walls because we had some curtains left in that room, but they'd shrunk over time and they'd been tiny to start with. So they ended about a meter from the floor and barely met in the middle. So I've kept them for other projects in the room and I'll make big luxurious curtains when I can find a plain fabric that I can maybe applique a little bit of this onto. That's the plan. Here is one of those old curtains. Can't work out which way. So you see that for a room with a four meter high ceiling and enormous windows, this really wasn't going to quite do it. It's barely gathered, but it will give me enough fabric to finish this piece. And I have found a little bit of wadding, which is obviously an off cut from my other curtains, but it's just going to fit there. So I'm in luck with that. And I've, miracle of miracles, found both my staple gun and my glue gun. So all we need to do is get this made and then find a bit of nice braiding to finish them. Now I'm marking the pattern at the same point as the other one so that we can center it in exactly the same way. I'm going to cut even slightly bigger than my mark, just to be sure that I've got enough to fold over when I staple gun it. I've removed the lining from the piece that was left and I'll keep that as well. It's all been washed, everything here is clean because that can be useful to line other things one day. Anything this big I keep and that's left me with all of this to use in other areas of the room, either for edging for the new curtains that I make or another idea I've had is cutting out the little peacocks and maybe appliquing them on the back of chairs. That could look very pretty in the room. Also, I would like to ask anyone out there, do you know where this pattern is from? Because it hasn't got the names left on the selvage, 
I just don't know where this wallpaper or fabric came from, but I have seen that the American designer Bunny Williams used it, I think, in the bathroom of her home in Connecticut. Sorry about the image quality, but we're looking at my computer at the moment on Pinterest. You see, it's the same wallpaper and that's in Bunny Williams's own bathroom in Connecticut. So perhaps I need to contact her to ask, but if any of you know, please tell me because I would love to know where this gorgeous peacock print is from. So this will be preciously stored for future projects. And this piece is going to be ironed to within an inch of its life. It's so pleasing how quickly something can go from creased to lovely and flat and the difference that it makes to the look. And yet strangely, I never bother ironing my clothes. Weird. I forget how much I enjoy it when I'm not doing it. Nearly done. This is the last little bit. Let's go and see how it looks on it. I've just put a couple of staples to hold this really loosely because this one will be held by the top fabric. I was lucky to have this. In lockdown, we're having to use what we have lying around. And with the bed and breakfast business closed, it's much cheaper to do things this way and there's a lot less waste. So I'm finding it quite pleasing. And I hope that I've learned a little bit from it, not to just immediately run out and buy whatever I need from the DIY shop, but to really look around the house and see what we've got first. Some people get quite upset about staples in these old bits of furniture, but I can't see what the difference between a staple in it or a nail in it is. It used to have nails, now it's got staples. They won't be seen because they're going to be underneath the braiding. And I've tried to line it up exactly with the one next to it so that the pattern is centered in the same point on both. Enchanté. break from the headboard because apparently the now mighty elusive Nick has managed to catch Aloysius the Ram. What did you do Nick the minute our backs were turned? Look he's as gentle as a lamb-ish. Oh, oh Baldrick is coming. If you tie Aloysius in the new field and leave the gate open the others might join him then you can release Aloysius and shut the gate. Nick and Alla wish us out for a nice walk on a lovely spring evening. <laughs> it's hard to know who's walking who right now. It looks a bit like a strange dance that the two of you are doing. We have left Aloysius on a very, very long lead and we're hoping that the others will come into this field and we'll be able to shut the gate and free him. But if they haven't joined him in an hour, we'll free him anyway. We don't like to see him tied up. He's a real bully, but he's our bully. At least he hasn't lost his appetite. Hi, Sif. How's it going? Look, look behind you, look behind you. Oh dear must have heard me coming. I'm going through my bag of trimmings, seeing if I can find anything. These are the right colors, but I don't think we want little tassels on there. I want something flat. This one is splendid. I must find a beautiful project for that one day. Uh, that's far too big for this. I have a few of these. I find them at the charity shops. They are old French ones that they used to put under chimneys or shelves. No idea what to do with it, but I'm sure it'll come in useful one day. Now, here we go. I think that this might work. Apparently I bought it for eight euros somewhere. Look, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It looks as though it was made for it. And that's why whenever I'm at a Volcanto or a charity shop, I buy any trimmings that I see because they're pretty inexpensive. And it means that when you're doing a project, you don't need to go to a shop, find the special color and spend a fortune. You have lots and lots to choose from. What do you think, mummy? 
perfect. Yeah. Yes. It's a good size as well. It's perfect. Right. This is my favourite bit because it's so quick and easy and I get to use the glue gun. I'm starting in the bottom corner so that the join isn't visible. The only difficulty is going to be getting a nice straight line. That looks lovely. I love the colour. Selma. It is very beautiful. Thank very, you. Very nice. It's over to you now. Yes, I have to fix the, the sides. They are yes. gone. So I think with a little ribble in it. That would be lovely. That would be lovely. And then I uh, have to measure it up. Paint it cream. Yes, paint it cream and with a little blue. The weather is bad, so I can start with it. Yeah! Well, not yet a bad weather, but yeah, to you starting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One more thing finished in this chateau. That feels good. We're going to carry the headboards up to the Chambre des Oiseaux and see how they look in place. It is nice, isn't it? I feel it coming together. See, our problem is that our bases are normal single bed bases, and these were wider than an ordinary single. Plus, you see, this coming down and Selma is a bit of a perfectionist luckily he doesn't like that at all so Selma's offered to make new base that won't be seen below and that takes a full width and eventually when I can afford it I will buy mattresses that fit specially yes. made it's funny how the colors have faded uh, the wallpapers faded more than the curtains but I like it very, very much because strangely, these beds weren't from this room, but this picks out the new color that the wallpaper's faded to. Amazing. So it's great, it just yeah. graduates. Seeing them like this has made me realize that this needs to be much, much grander, Mummy. Much grander than we previously anticipated. For a start, they can't be on this wall because they're too close together. So we're going to have either both on that side of the door or I think what would be even grander would be one coming this way and one coming that way on the other side of the door, each with a bed crown and curtains over them. But that means that the whole wardrobe has to go. Yeah, someone agrees. <laughs> yes. And then we can this one out. Yes, that's got to go. A little problem with the wallpaper. But little you, big problem. I think you will figure that out. This is the wardrobe that's going to have to go. And it was built in here, so the skirting board goes around it. And unfortunately, the wallpaper doesn't go behind it. So... They run out of wallpaper. <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put the classic in it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to obviously have a massive problem when we take this out. I say we. Not at all. takes this out, yes, I'll have a problem. And that would be nice when I take it out, find a place where I directly can put it in. Then I we'll... think we have a place. Mummy, what do you think about this going in the maintenance room at the end of the corridor for all of my china? I think, yes, uh, except that we need um, a costume, wardrobe. We talked about that as well, I up in the attic. Already. There's got to be here. <laughs> This is what we're currently using it for. Well, I put them there because... 18th century costumes. <laughs> Very important. Because we have no guests at the moment, so I put them there. And I'll make huge cream curtains. Yeah, this has it to be gone, eh? Yes. Shall I check your work? Oh, go ahead. I'm I feeling... You my glasses, you're very lucky. I'm quietly confident. Actually, it is wonderful. You've done a, an excellent job, sweetheart. Oh, what about that that overlap here, darling? There isn't an overlap, don't <laughs> even try. <laughs> it's perfect, sweetheart, it's lovely. But I'm so happy to see them both covered. You can't imagine that Me has too. been a, a work in progress for how long. You have so much to do. And look where we placed them. Look, this just carries on. 
Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? By sheer fluke, Selma and I did not do that on purpose. It's wonderful, darling. You've done so well. Bravo! Bravo, Selma! Well, I have to start it. <laughs> <laughs> you can it then, yeah. But that will be fine. <laughs> I don't believe it. Nick's done it again whilst Marie and I have been dealing with getting the burgers ready. He's caught Hannibal, our white ram. So finally, Aloysius isn't alone. Let's go and have a look. Finally, Aloysius is not alone. He's with Hannibal. Well, you lot should be ashamed of yourselves, shouldn't you? Abandoning Aloysius, your mighty leader like that. You don't even seem fussed. They usually run up to us, so they're a bit skittish at the moment. We're going to have to leave it another day to get more sheep across to the other field. It's a slow process. We have received the most extraordinary looking gin from Marin. I carried on unpacking the box one day at a time from Marin because it was such a beautiful parcel last week that I want to eke it out. And unbelievably, this entire bottle of gin was in there all the way from Canada. It's a beautiful colour and I'm going to make it into martinis because we are having burger and martini night. Does everybody want an olive in their martini? Yes. It's a shame we can't go to the market and get the delicious olives there. I wonder when the market will start to reopen here. It is open. It's open on the Friday, Friday one. Yeah. Yes. That's where we get the olives. Ah, I don't know if they have you already sound or... uh, Maybe we'll have to wait till next month. Mm. There we go, everybody. Martinis are ready. Mm. And nicely chilled. Here we go, Selma. And next we'll try it as a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rather glamorously strange looking. I'm definitely going to get this for parties like Halloween. Imagine that colour for martinis then. Cheers, everybody. The minute I saw the colour of those gorgeous martinis, I knew we had to have some lilacs on the table. There's always an excuse for a theme in this house. Oh, and the smell, it's just delicious. That should be enough to brighten it up. Maybe one more from over here. There. What do you think? Wow, oh, Marie, you genius. Hey, that looks good. It yeah, looks really good. Let's go. I will grab my martini and I have the lilacs. We are good to go. Nicholas, I like what you're doing here. I like the little gherkin slices. Mm. Cheers, Percy. Cheers. Mm. Yes. Cheers, so darling. Well. And can you just show the entire world your cardigan? Everybody uh, who... Card yes, everyone in lockdown should be wearing bow ties with their cardigans. Percy is the man to show us the way. Now, we've heard that apparently when you add tonic, it turns pink. So we tried it neat as a martini. And now we are... Oh, how lovely. Look at that. Isn't that magical? Ah, it's like Harry Potter over oh. here. Look, Antoine. <laughs> well, this is incredibly pleasing. Antoine, that is a beautiful, beautiful sight. The time has come. That's a suitably fat one. Also, Antoine, you haven't shown us your Lego. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Antoine, did you make that by yourself? Yes. <laughs> the famous Lego that never arrived. It did arrive! Mm. <laughs> That's beautiful. No way! Oh! It's so good! And, yeah. and you have the Avengers in it. That's the Avengers! Oh, I love this one! The raccoon. Yeah, the raccoon. That's my favourite one. Mm. Now, you've had your Lego, so there's no need to get disappointed at the adult presence next to you. <laughs> Go for it. It is the one for Marie. It is, it is. Somebody wrote to me saying they were going to send this to Marie after the last week's vlog. I'm not telling you anything. Oh. <laughs> Stop. Tell me, I'm going to see the
You can't unwrap presents without a scissor master. Yes. Wow! <gasps> a real good pool. A real one. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Bye, voilà. So now we can bake properly. Because we've been suffering it will up not, till now. Uh, it will not stick to the bottom. It's perfect. a really nice one as it well. It is perfect. Mm. I've all my fingerprints on it now. Yeah. Mm. Well. Useful to light in the trenches. Yes. Mm. Well, right. you know Mummy's ready for anything. It's and it's so awesome. light as well. It's I love wonderful. that. Mm -hmm. And this one, what is that? Oh, oh, a letter. As an Australian family who have visited this magical country often and always wanted to live here, you've helped inspire us to just do it. Finally, we have, and after leaving behind drought, bushfires and floods, we made it to France and thankfully purchased a beautiful property. Welcome to France, Katie. That is incredibly exciting that you've moved here. This is beautiful. Yeah. See, you focus on yours, Anton. You focus on that one. <laughs> Look at that. Look. Oh, how lovely. That's just splendid. You can do. I think this is going to have to come to my bedroom. No. <laughs> oh, mummy will be delighted. Look at this, mummy. Look at that. <laughs> Everyone is pleased in this house. I'm <laughs> Antoine is dangerously close to getting to the heart of the package. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well, it couldn't have come at a better time, could it, Mummy? Oh, I don't know, know who did it. <laughs> that is beautiful. And Katie, I love really big mugs. And you might have noticed I always have one of the massive Royal Copenhagen thermal mugs. And it's my pride and joy. I hold on to it all the time. And today, my mother broke it spectacularly, smashed into a thousand pieces, didn't, didn't you, Mummy? Who had put it in the wrong place? I would like to tell everyone what my mother did when she broke my precious <laughs> mug Stephanie today. Stephanie, little decorum. She was completely alone at that end of the kitchen. I was sitting miles away, minding my own business. She smashed the mug off the table. It went onto the granite floor. And then the first thing she said was, who did it? <laughs> <laughs> when who put it in such a stupid place? Thank you. I will be using this. Thank you very, very much. How gorgeous is that? Look at Well, I better not put it in <laughs> From a distance, what do you think? A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Marquis and Marquis of Lalande. Dan Banda, Daniela, Danielle Bernakovic, Veronica Castillo, Laura Damari, Caroline Furster, Brenda Gibbons, Lorca Hutikova, JC Ward, Maureen Palmer, Colleen Troyer, Brian Woodward, and David Young. And thank you to all of you.